안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. On this video, we are going to do a Q&A. Last week on our YouTube channel and on our Instagram and on our Slack channel, we announced that we're going to record this video and we got too many questions. So I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. Let's get started. So my daily routine before Corona and after Corona changed. So now that is Corona time, I just wake up, walk this dog over here and then come back home and literally work all the way until the afternoon. I eat one time per day. So I just cook dinner at night and then I walk the dog again at night and that's it. I don't really have a hobby apart from reading books. I really like reading books nowadays and also I enjoy watching like really good movies. I'm not so into series, but I really like cinema. I have never been good at mathematics at all. I think the most memorable project is the one I'm currently working on right now, which is I'm trying to just make the whole website of the Academy of Normal Colors again from zero and also, I'm going to make the new challenges and maybe a mobile application. So that's a pretty big, massive project that I'm very excited about. Papago, because I need to translate many things when I, live, when I, when I see Korean text. Let her be, let her be. No, she's just destroying it. Okay. People ask me this question a lot. Like, why do I say Anyo Haseyo or why I say Kimchi or why am I in Korea? Well, the answer is that I live in Korea. I have a Korean wife and her family is Korean and I love that family. And I also have friends in Korea. So yes, that, that's why. Yes, there are many paid courses in my brain coming soon. I want to make a serverless course. Where is she going? Where are you going? There are many courses I want to make, but I just don't have the time. I want to make serverless course. I want to make also more Golang course. I was thinking of maybe cloning a, like a cryptocurrency exchange in Golang. That would be super exciting. But yeah, there is no time, but they're all coming slowly, slowly, slowly. And also I have to update many courses. So also that thing as well. I don't know what I do. I like learning languages, so maybe I'll be speaking many languages, uh, but nothing else apart from that. I don't think I can do anything else. Maybe taking photographs? I don't know. Okay, development-wise, I really want to finish the project that I'm currently working on, which is making the whole new Nomad Coders. And life-wise, I really would like to, I don't know, become more Korean. I would like to be able to understand the culture more. I want to be able to speak the language. I want to be able to have more Korean friends and have like a normal Korean life. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know anything about coffee whatsoever, so I just drink any coffee. My favorite game is Ghost Up, but I really enjoy playing Ghost Up. It's really, it gives me adrenaline rush. It's really fun. Every day, as much as I can. Correct. I don't think I am good at cooking Sangyeopsal. I'm good at eating Sangyeopsal. If you want to go and have Sangyeopsal with me, let's go together. Pizza or spaghetti? Pizza. Salmon or champong? Champong. I dip black. I only have black panties. Yes, I was born with long hair. You can ask my mom. <laughs> Any scrunch is fine. <laughs> this big. Lean, of course. I go to Medium, I go to Reddit, I go to Hacker News, especially in Reddit, because there are many subreddits. So that means that you can follow JavaScript, Python, React, whatever that is. There is where everybody goes to like share anything new, any library, any, any, anything new, anything new is there on Reddit. If you feel overwhelmed with a new tech, the best thing you can do is just stop learning new tech. You don't have to learn new tech all the time. Using boring tech, most of the time is the best tool for the job. So you don't have to be keep on learning many, many things and updating and updating. You, you don't have to. You just, just look at things for maybe a couple hours, look at what they are about, but you don't have to learn them all, right? Just focus on your core. What is your core? Are you a Python developer? Are you a Go developer? Are you a Java developer? And focus on your core. The rest can be on your radar, but it sh you shouldn't learn everything new. That's just the recipe for burnout. Data structures and algorithms are important because uh, being a programmer and being able to implement your own data structures or being able to be good at logic and algorithms is just good gym for your brain. So that's it. If you are good at that, you are going to solve problems easier. Also, people are obsessed with data structures and algorithms because that's what some Korean companies ask on their interview, which sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. But even if you don't want to go on an interview, data structures and algorithms are good to learn because again, they make, they keep you sharp in your brain. No, you can be an Android developer without knowing Java. That's why we have Kotlin. So go and check out Kotlin. Java, the Java uh, domination is coming to an end on Android, thankfully. 
Right, so this is a question, Gia. What the heck, man? This is a question that I get a lot, and that the answer is not learn C or learn Python. If you want to become a security specialist, you need to understand how systems work. You need to understand how connections work. You need to understand how servers work, how computers work, how ports work. You need to understand basically informatics, like the computer science part. I would recommend you to learn uh, Linux, become very good at Linux and at Kali Linux. But again, there's not one programming language. It's just, you could hack with any programming language. The point is, you need to understand the systems around it. This question is very specific, like variable names and how to name them. But actually, what this is about is about software quality. So for this, I would recommend you a book that is called Code Complete. Code Complete talks about this, talks about software quality, how to structure projects, how to name classes, how to get requirements from the client. So I will 100% recommend that uh, book if you are looking to improve your software quality. Yes, you should learn English 100%. There is no, no question about it. I, English is not my native language, but thanks to English, I'm able to do everything that I'm able to do and I'm able to learn everything that I know because of English. So 100%, go out and learn English. I don't know how to tell if somebody is fit for programming. Um, it's not about you are fit and you are not. It's about more like, how do you feel when you program? Do you feel like it's your element? Do you feel passionate about it? Do you like what you do? Do you like the result? Do you like seeing something on the screen? Are you good at sitting down in a computer for 10 hours every day? Those sorts of things are better questions to ask for, rather than say, are you good at programming? Or are you fit for programming? I think if you don't want to be replaced, yes, you need to start, you need to learn programming. Uh, publishing is not enough anymore, unfortunately. You need to at least be able to know what JavaScript is. Um, also, it's a, good, it's a good thing to have. If you're a publisher and you know very well CSS and you know how to make beautiful designs, if you complement that with JavaScript, it's gonna be amazing. You can build beautiful interactive stuff. The programming language that you start with does not matter. The point is that you should start. So that's what people don't realize. You don't need to choose the right programming language. It is not a marriage. You are not gonna get married to that programming language. You can learn Python first and then move to C, or you can start with Rust and then move to Go. You don't need to overthink where to start. The point is you need to start. Having said this, the easier programming language to start with is even Python or something more web focus like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So yeah, there's some programming languages that are easier for beginners. I would never make a beginner start with C or I would never make a beginner start with Java. That's too much, that's crazy. People ask the question about Vue.js versus React. Listen, I'm a React guy. My courses are on React and I love React and that's the only thing I learned. I did learn Vue.js and I look into Vue.js, but for me, React puts money on the table. Many, many companies are using React. React is powered by Facebook, so the community is amazing. Most of the startups that I follow use React. So, I don't know. But if I had to choose, I would choose to start with React, 100%. Okay, many people are not gonna like this answer, but I prefer Mac rather than Windows because of the hardware, because of the mouse, and because of the console, because it's a Unix-based system. Now, I don't like Apple as a company because they are doing things that I don't agree with. But hardware-wise and software-wise and console-wise, I really think Mac OS is superior to Windows. You can do programming with MacBook Air. MacBook Air is a good computer. I mean, you can do programming with slow computers. Programming is just writing text on a screen. So there's nothing more lightweight than that. Now, the question would be, what kind of programming do you want to do? Do you want to program video games? Do you want to program iOS and Android applications? Because if you need, want to do those things, you're going to have to run simulators. And that's when your computer will start to sweat. If you want to make websites, if you want to make backends and frontends, a MacBook Air is more than perfect to program. 13 inch, 15 inch, 17 inch, go with the biggest screen you can afford. Your eyes will appreciate it. I have a 15 inch MacBook Pro, but also I have a separate display that I use. I don't program on the MacBook Pro only because now it's too small for my eyes and I love big screens. So yeah, maybe choose a small laptop, but buy a big display so you can program and your eyes will appreciate that. I think to become a good developer, you need to be humble always. You always need to be learning. You should never believe that you know. You should always be studying. You should always listen to feedback. And it doesn't matter if you have 10 years of experience, you still 
can learn from somebody that has six months of experience. And I think that's something that some developers forget. They forget that we should all stay with a mindset of beginners. We should always ask questions. We should always listen, listen. It doesn't matter if you have five years of experience, 10 years of experience, whatever it is, we should always be students. Always feel like a newbie and always feel like you don't know anything. And be aware of the amount of things you don't know. That's very important because that makes you a humble person. All right, thank you so much for all the comments. Thank you for the questions. I know there are many that I didn't answer in the video, but don't worry, I'm gonna go in the comments and answer them with my keyboard. And now I have a question for you. My question would be, what sort of videos you would like to see on the channel? I can talk about almost anything related to computer. Programming languages, advice for programmers, freelancing, traveling as a programmer, hacking, anything. What do you wanna learn? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for your love. I appreciate it. Stay safe. Don't forget to be happy. Don't forget to eat kimchi. Kamsamnida, saranghayo, and bye-bye.